In the last video, we learned about ideal solids or black bodies. These are objects that are perfect at absorbing electromagnetic radiation. What makes them so good at absorbing light? Well, they have a lot of electrons, and those energy levels mix together, which create new values. And they also have a lot of complex molecules and molecule chains, which makes it easy to vibrate with lots of different frequencies and rotate with lots of different frequencies. So effectively, this creates a continuous spectrum of possible energy levels. As a result, every frequency or wavelength can be absorbed. By contrast, when they emit radiation, there's a specific profile based on the temperature. Lower wavelengths are emitted at higher temperatures, and higher wavelengths are emitted at lower temperatures. If you're wondering what an example is of a black body, look no farther than an ordinary flame. When this flame burns, and the matchstick at the end burns, soot particles are produced, and those soot particles are really, really hot. Hot enough that their radiation is visible. And so this yellow light that the soot particles emit is an example of black body radiation. Another good example is lava. When you look at this stone over here, you see a kind of grayish color. That's because light from the sun bounces off of the stone and it hits your eyes, and the colors that reach your eyes are gray. But when you look at this really, really hot lava, you are not seeing sunlight bouncing off. This yellow is actually emitted from the lava particles themselves. Why is that color visible to you? Because the lava is really, really hot, so the emitted light is visible light. Normally, lava is not hot enough to emit visible light, and in that case, it just emits infrared. In fact, most objects that we think of emit infrared light because they're not hot enough to emit visible light. Here's an example. A professor here from Cornell University is doing a demonstration, and he's actually going to show how the Earth emits infrared. Right now, you can see infrared coming from the professor using this uh, special camera. And when he heats up the Earth using this flame torch, you're going to see some infrared there, too. So now the Earth is beginning to emit this infrared. Why? Because it has been heated up to a higher temperature. This graph summarizes what we've learned. These perfect black bodies, which are perfect absorbers and perfect emitters of electromagnetic radiation, even though they're perfect, they don't emit every wavelength at the same intensity. The colder the object is, here's a colder object, the longer the wavelengths it emits. And the hotter the object is, here's a hot object, the shorter the wavelengths. What happens to the peak? Well, this curve has some wavelength that is emitted at peak intensity. This curve has a wavelength emitted at peak intensity, and this curve has a wavelength that is most intensely emitted. And what happens to that peak intensity wavelength? It gets shorter when the object gets hotter. And the graph shows this because as we increase the temperature, the peak wavelength is going to the left, getting smaller on this axis. And where is visible light on this axis? Visible light is a relatively low wavelength, so only the really, really hot objects will emit much visible light. So here's a graph with several different emission curves for several different objects. Here's a question for you. Which object is the hottest? Now don't be fooled. This is a trick question. Look, they're all at the same temperature. How do I know? Because they all have the exact same peak wavelength. So this graph doesn't seem to make sense. If they're at the same temperature, why is there any difference in their height? Shouldn't they all be at the exact same height? The answer is that these are not all black bodies. Only the first one is a perfect black body. But perfect black bodies are idealizations. They don't exist in the real world. So this curve is an object at the same temperature, but it only emits 80% of what the black body emits. The next one is maybe only emitting 50%, half of what a black body would emit. 
at that temperature. And this last one is at the same temperature as the black body, but it only emits about 30%. So these real world objects are not perfect emitters the way black bodies are. They're imperfect. And this value epsilon measures how close do they get to a perfect black body. This value here is called the emissivity. Sometimes we use epsilon to represent it, and sometimes we just use an E. The emissivity is a value that ranges from 0 to 1, and it tells us how close an object gets to a perfect black body. How much intensity does that object actually emit? Is it 100% of the theoretical intensity or just 80%? Let's see some equations that describe this. Here is the first one. Remember that when the object has a higher temperature, if these are all black bodies, when the object has a higher temperature, there is more intensity being emitted. So that's what this equation says. But what if it's not a black body? Because this is just an equation we use for black bodies exclusively. Well, if the object is a real-world object, then you just add in the emissivity. And as the emissivity drops lower and lower, smaller and smaller decimal, the intensity will be lower and lower. That's what this graph shows. Now, emissivity is defined as the fraction of intensity that the object actually emits. In other words, you take the intensity that the object emits, and you divide by the intensity of a black body, which has the same temperature as the object, and the same dimensions as the object. One final equation the maximum wavelength, which is radiated most intensely, is inversely proportional to the object's temperature. And the constant of proportionality is this. Remember, that's what shows that the peaks get farther left when the object heats up. This is a really hot object, high temperature, but small peak wavelength. This is a really cold object, low temperature, but big peak wavelength. This is farther right on the graph. These equations have names. The first two are generally referred to as the Stefan-Boltzmann law, and this sigma constant here, it's a constant that is called the Stefan-Boltzmann constant. This here is the definition of emissivity, and this last equation is called Wien's displacement law.